Hello everybody, in this video I'm going to show you this quick little Pong game I created as well as uh, give you a guide through its source code which is available for free on HIO and uh, hopefully you know you can play it, have a little bit of fun and uh, maybe download the code and check it out. So first of all I'm going to launch the game and play a little bit just to show you. It's uh, pretty much like Pong except I added a little twist in the scoring system which means that the longer the game plays without you know, having any goals, the more scores that a goal will score, the more points it will score. And uh, the ball also gets faster with time. I think it ended up pretty fun. You know, it's a little bit hard. You can uh, move faster if you hold down shift, which is kind of necessary to get the ball right and beat the, the enemy, which is pretty hard actually. I built it in uh, one week in my free time. Uh, the basic idea is, uh, you know, I did a lot of episodes of Handmade Hero to learn, you know, game engine programming in C++, and uh, it was a lot of fun, and I, but I wanted to tackle a project which was uh, more of a my, my own ideas in terms of implementing, and uh, I thought, you know, I needed a very quick way to start doing it, and a Pong was a fun little game that I can build pretty easily, so I started doing that, and uh, hopefully I can get, I can do, you know, more complex games. Uh, until we get, you know, so like to full 3D games, which are, which I really like. Okay, so that's basically the game. Now let's do a, let's show you the source code. There is a, there are three files. Uh, this one's the main file, which, which uh, you should compile. The, it includes the other ones. It's just a one compilation unit, which I think is, you know, makes a lot of sense in terms of uh, organizing the project. So I'm going to open Forcoder, which is my editor of choice. You can do it uh, in which one you think it's more comfortable. And uh, yeah, so Windows Platform Layer, this is where the Windows specific code lives. You know, if, if we ever do like a Linux port or something, uh, we should just change this one file, which calls the other ones. And uh, this is like the Windows entry point. I use it. Uh, according to their documentation. And uh, there's really not much to it. I just get uh, the performance counter to check out the, the time it takes between each frame because I'm not like sleeping in the game loop. I'm just doing as quick as I can, making frames. Then I launch the window class. And uh, well, I created this if development here just to put the window in a place I feel it's comfortable in my work space. And then I toggle full screen and uh, well, the game input struct I'm going to show you, it's inside the uh, path for common class. Well, it just has some uh, defines here at the top, some utilities like min and max, asserts, things like that. And uh, the input, it's pretty cool, it's just a struct. Uh, maybe, you know, if we add like control support in the next games, we will make this uh, another struct, which would be a lot of controllers differently and stuff. So uh, each button we need, the platform layer is responsible for giving us that. So we think we think of the buttons as uh, actions, like move up and move down, not actually inputs. Because th this can change, you know, maybe one platform is like W and S and the other one is like the analog stick. So yeah, the, the, when we create a game, it's just an array of buttons pretty much and the last delta time in seconds. Yeah, so I set the default to like, uh, 60 hertz, which I guess is pretty common. And then, uh, but every frame I check out and update the last delta times. So I just process the keyboard inputs. Pretty straightforward. I just uh, look for certain events of the window and, uh, and see if the, the W or the S key is down. And this is a pretty cool system I learned in Handmade Hero using the half transitions count which means that uh, you can press the button more than once between frames and uh, you'll capture the number of transitions. So maybe it will show that you, you know, press the button, but it, it didn't end it down, depending on what the game wanted to do with the input. Yeah, and this is just the setup of the buffer because I'm using software rendering, you know, no libraries, not even OpenGL, which is pretty cool, something I learned from Handmade Hero because it's very easy to do like the simple like box drawing uh, without any libraries and uh, it's very easy to set up and it's really easy to debug because there's no 
very little code. There's like, I think, 500 lines of code. And uh, OK, so at this point, we, uh, you, we update the game rendering. Now, this is the call of the this game.c file, which uh, this is it, you know, where, where we process the game. And uh, this is pretty easy. You know, I just have a few global variables to check the, sp the state of the game. And I, I, and I initialize a few uh, settings. So this is the play input, you know, I just update. I update the velocity directly, not the acceleration. It, it feels really old school. I think it was kind of a decent approach. And uh, and then the, the enemy movement. The players, uh, the speed is pretty high and it gets higher the more you score. So the game gets a lot harder the, the more you, you play in terms of winning, you know, the more you win, which is a pretty good uh, feedback loop, I think. Yeah, and uh, okay, so now that the ball is moving and uh, the collision was really hard coded in the sense of uh, the sizes of everything because I didn't want to build a whole structure and collision system because it was a very simple game. So uh, yeah, I ended up doing a lot of a lot of things by hand and uh, it worked fine. You know, I didn't think it was a problem because of the size and maybe, you know, I can start looking for patterns that, that later I can abstract and make more reusable structures when I start tackling bigger and bigger games. And uh, this is the rendering, which is a uh, pretty simple. I just have this one uh, draw rect in pixels function, which uh, just takes, you know, the the min and max x and y, and I clip them to the screen. And I just, you know, very stupidly go every pixel and uh, fill the color. Yeah, and then I have the clear function, which just uh, makes it easier to, you know, clear the size of the buffer as well as the draw rect. Uh, and th this one's pretty cool because I, I wanted to have like a scale that worked independently of the screen size. So if I uh, show you the, the final game, if I make it that very wide, you know, you can sti still see the main play and just show extra room here in the sides. But also if I make it very uh, tall, it makes the room on top and uh, also shows the screen size. It's pretty cool this, because uh, the other game I did uh, without an engine, I did in C and I launched it on HIO and people who didn't, who didn't play it on uh, 16 by nine uh, monitors kind of a cropped a few areas and that was really bad. I think so for this game, I want to have a, a, a way of always keeping the player area on the screen, which is kind of a hard coded way in you know, doing. I just kept the uh, aspect ratio uh, relative to the height or the width and I just hard coded some magic numbers here for the scale to make sure that it fit on the screen. Uh, yeah, and the draw number, because I didn't want to import a font or asset or anything like that, so I, <laughs> but I still want to have the score, right? So I just ended up, you know, I ended up making a routine to draw numbers. And, uh, you know, I just it was made it by hand. It was pretty boring. And then I loop over that for every digit inside the number. And, uh, yeah, that was the, the bulk of the game code here. And uh, the platform layer just, you know, loops, you know, now, now it's going to get the device context and draw on a Windows. You no, know, just very boring Windows functions, not very, not much to it. And then I'm going to update the last DT. And I'm just showing the platform common again. This will be imported like for the Linux platform layers and things like that. Uh, yeah, there's the input and then there's the, uh, the rendering specification of the buffer. As you can see, there's a, not a lot to it. You know, then the Windows platform layer, there's, there are a few helpers like toggle full screen, which is pretty cool. You know, I, Random Chance has this blog post about uh, a quick way to, to tr switch to full screen. And it works pretty great, I think, as well as some helpers like getting the Windows dimensions and resizing it. And uh, yeah, the window callback to resize and destroy and things like that. And then the input processing, which is the, the half transition count thing I, I explained, which is pretty cool. And uh, yeah, and time functions to make sure to get the, the time that went by. So that was a pretty quick explanation, like 10 minutes or so. And uh, if you 
if you are interested, please uh, download the source code. It's on HIO. Here it is. I'm going to put a link a uh, bit in the description. And uh, you can download it for free. And uh, there's the executable if you want to play around. I think it, it ends up pretty fun, you know, the way that uh, it feels. And as well as the source code. Because it's a very simple game, it's not very optimized. It's everything is CPU intensive and only uses one core. But it's, you know, like I said, the first one that I want to create. So I wanted to keep it simple. I didn't want to complicate it a lot. Also, the source code is pretty simple because of that. So if you want to download it, these three files and play around with it, you know, maybe if you have any specific question, you can also let me know that I would love to answer that. And uh, yeah, you know, hopefully someone will find it uh, usable. And uh, I just wanted to post it because maybe it'll help somebody, you know, because uh, Handmade Hero was very important in helping me to learn, you know, program. Because I did program before, like using Unreal and things like that, but it's different, you know. And uh, I'm really enjoying the way doing it here. So hopefully I can do bigger and bigger projects. And uh, if you're interested, you know, uh, just follow me on, on YouTube or uh, HIO and I'll be posting it there. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching.